All right, yo, I don't have much time, but uh, I'm about to do a time lapse of the sunset, which is kind of already set. Okay, a picture every eight seconds. Yo, so here's the deal, right? Our camera setting is on manual. It's gonna get way darker on the camera, so I'm just gonna adjust the setting once it gets too dark. Yo. <laughs> My lens is broke, but look at this, yo. Pack it up, boy. Wait, wait, wait. That's that's the wrong one. That's the before. Wait. Okay, this is the after. Yo. <laughs> What's good, guys? Let's get the hoodie. You gotta get the hoodie on if you're a hacker. You. <laughs> Hello. We have 600 raw photographs. The pictures get darker and darker and darker, and then boom. Oh my God, that is so bright. I'm gonna make this shot look good. And then I sync every single setting. Save metadata to files. It creates a XMP file for every image. How convenient. You can see it's getting darker, and then there's like setting change. My program is going to automatically detect the changes, hopefully. Oh, metadata update. <laughs> oh, yo. Re import our pictures. What did you guys think of that uh, time lapse, yo? And now you're probably wondering, how the hell did you do this image processing? At this point, we know nothing, all right? Two years ago, Devin has no idea how to do anything. I'm just sitting here and I'm going, how am I supposed to determine how bright this picture is? And so I'm going through some settings and I just see something that says metadata. I expected it to just be like random characters and I open it, uh, shutter speed value, F number, aperture value. I started to realize, oh my God, all of these things are settings that you can apply to an image in Photoshop. Like look, saturation, sharpness, luminance. So uh, wait, wait, let me take a step back. I took this picture and then I went down one stop. That's what photographers say. I always thought that's just like a photographer saying, you know what I mean? This is the crazy thing. We need to apply a plus one exposure to this picture. You can't tell the difference. Also, you can look at the histogram. It looks slightly different, but look at how close they are, right? I'm not playing with you, all right? <laughs> I'm gonna make this um, negative 2.3145, something very specific. Save the file, open with Photoshop. Yeah, so 2.31, it rounded it. Anything that is written in this file, Photoshop will use when it opens up the picture. The ISO equals log of the current ISO, log 800, divided by next ISO, divided by 400, divided by log two. Oh, would you look at that? It's exactly 1.000. All of these formulas are the exact same, except this one is, it's just log to the root two. Only two pictures here. Um, I broke it. What the, f what do you think? It doesn't work with two pictures. <laughs> We gonna look at the code. Everything revolves around this image class. Basically it stores all the data about a single image. Oh, and then this is something that's actually really important. Updates XMP file of all images within the change sequence. It actually iterates all of the images, grabs the XMP file, and then it replaces the key. So right now I can replace the exposure or I can replace the temperature based on what I give it here. It's gonna actually write the new file. This is just like setting up the objects so that we can have all these modules. And then this one file uses everything that I just showed you and actually pulls it all together. It's only four, it's less than 400 lines long. Creating a list of images, a list of exposure changes, and a list of temperature changes because we're expecting to see some changes. When the program first starts, gets user input for the starting image. This is the first step where we're actually saying loaded, continues looping while the XMP file exists. You can see this, this one function parses all of the data from the file into the image object, and then we add the image to our list. So now we have a list of all the data about all the images. Now we 
can do whatever we want, right? So we're gonna say, analyze exposure. Iterate through every single image, get the current image and get the next image. Current image and the next image on my sheet of paper here. If the exposure is changed between the current and the next image, then we create an exposure change object. This is where the fun part comes in, all right? We have this one exposure value, which is set to zero. So this is the value that we're gonna overwrite to tell Photoshop that these two pictures need to change by this much to make them look the exact same. If the aperture was changed, use our math.log, the current aperture divided by the next aperture divided by log of square root two. If the ISO was changed the same way using our formulas, not only do we have like an exposure change, which contains lists of images, but we have a list of exposure changes and the white balance is very simple. Same thing we iterate through. And if the white balance is changed, just subtract the two and then add the change to the list. And then here is the function, update metadata. So now that we have all of this data about all of the increments that need to happen in the offsets, it's all still in memory. Nothing has been written to the files yet. So what do we do? We call update metadata. <laughs> Look at how awesome this is, right? Um, updates metadata of every change on every image. And look at how short it is. Because remember, we have a list of exposure changes. Get each one, update the metadata of exposure 2012. You know, this function looks nice and short and I added a lot of comments into it, but it's very powerful because all I have to say now, here's the change, update the metadata. That's the whole program that I just explained to you. My goal was to go in depth enough for you guys to like understand how it's possible to go from not knowing anything to actually building whatever you want. People keep emailing me asking like, how can I get good at programming or how can I learn? What's the best way to get ahead? And my, my opinion is just take on impossible projects, which sounds like a bad idea and it might get you frustrated, but also like I kind of want to keep developing this. And if you guys have any cool ideas about what else we could do, um, because you could, anything you can do in Photoshop, you can do pretty much through here. Yeah, so make sure you guys subscribe.